I just hope we've got room for it. I'm getting so much now. Almost too much. Where's it all coming Thank from? You. Thank you. <laughs> Was all that handed in today? This is from Mrs. Applebite. Here, come on, man. Let me give you a hand. Everybody's going mad, finding things. Our museum's a success at last. <laughs> I'm on the last diary. Four down and one to go. Well done, Colin. Do you know, I told Miss Bendybones about yesterday's contributions, and she said, the villagers don't need anything to remind them of the past. Now that the spirit is around again. <laughs> she says the strangest things. Still, she does keep the rectory looking smart. Mm. I do wish she wasn't leaving us. Yeah. Come on, go. Does Mrs. Ems live here, please? Well, she did and she doesn't. Oh, I see. Do you want to come in? I mustn't stay. She was lodging here, but, uh, well, she left, so, sort of suddenly. Oh, sorry. Who told you she was here? I just wondered. May I ask what you want her for? She's looking for me, too. Well, she didn't say anything about looking for someone. She, she never went out except shopping. Her daughter never stirred the whole time they were here. Her daughter? Yeah. Very quiet she was. She never spoke to me. What's the matter? Well, don't cry. Miss Bendy Bones? Oh! That's me finished in here. Got a cobweb in your hair. Oh! Where's that from then? I don't know. No cobwebs in this house, I see to that. Yes. We're sorry you're going. Don't be sorry. It all worked out. You'll see. Thank you. That was in Miss Bendybone's hair. So? Where'd she get it? Not in this place, the way she keeps it. All right, I'll buy it. Where? I told you I heard whispering last night over my bedroom ceiling. She was up in the loft. It's full of cobwebs up there. Yes. But who is she whispering to? She's hiding someone up there? What did I say to make her cry? And Jimmy came in and pointed at her and said, Margaret, whatever the name is, she just fled into the street, out of sight, before I could see which way she'd gone. Was it the girl Grandad drew? Mm, Margaret. Did she say what her name was? Oh. Should have asked her, shouldn't I? No one could have been up here, not without making a hole in this lot. So, what did I hear in the night? Are you looking for rats? <sighs> I've heard scratchings up there. Well, don't have a go yourself. They can be vicious if cornered. I'll get someone in. Right. I didn't hear scratching. It was definitely whispering. Well, there's no one up here now. I bet it was the third guardian up there. Well, it couldn't be anybody else. I mean, nobody you know, natural. Miss Bendy Bones' cobweb proves it. Well, nearly. And the girl Mum saw, it must add up to something. Dave, are you beginning to go along with us? I don't know. If there's any kind of logic there, it's pretty weird in my mind. The girl, she's gone to church! Who? The girl, she's in the church! It's not her. It's a dummy. Oh, no. Her finger. Colin. It's been stuck on. But it's in the box. Listen. Lovely. Come in. Shh. The 
three guardians together. For the first time, at last. Lie down like us. Tis the best way to see it. See what we see. Goodness is goodness. Peace is peace. And blessings is forever. Whatever that may be. Is it Edie? Well, I never. Edie. Tis I. Come home to bide a while, my dear relation. Alas, only for a very short spell. I was half expecting you. Something told me. Come in, come in. What a part. All the great actresses play her. I'll play Portia one day. Of course you will. Now, yeah. square root of that. Listen, Dave. What? When I'm a famous actress, I'll get someone to write this as a play. Too late. Hmm? Shakespeare's already done it. Uh, no, I mean our story. What's happening in our village? Who will you play? Mr. Alabaster. Oh. Are you going out, Mum? Oh, I'll go mad if I don't get some fresh air. Either I'm cooped up in that store or I'm in the kitchen. 
Never known her to go for a walk before. I think this is getting to the whole village, even Mum. I'm sorry you won't be staying long. I don't get many visitors these days. I'm here for a special purpose, for the sake of the old religion, for him I carried to his hiding place. No longer there, of course. Your ways are not my ways. Now, your God, my God. Not as the Holy Book writes it. But you're my flesh and blood, so very welcome. It's all ready. How do you eat water without a fire? Got the electric in a bathroom now. You won't recognise upstairs. Now, you have a good soak. And I'll brew a cup of tea for us to share. <laughs> That is kind. Up. You gave me a terrible fright. What are you doing up here? Please, mistress, I'm last. Let me walk with you. You're not still looking for Mrs. Ems? I haven't found her yet. Well, you won't appear, surely. Which is the way out? Um, this way, I think. You don't live around here, do you? Me ma'am's staying with friends somewhere. Oh, I see. <gasps> Come on. Hold my hand. My cousins do tell of ghosties. I don't want to believe things like that. Dead people are dead. They don't wake up again to scare you and me. They do. Demons with bony faces and sparkling eyes and, and voices. They say, woe to you, woe, and... And spy on you. You're being teased. Your hand's a bit bony, isn't it? It could do with some more flesh on it. My uncle George did a fiery chariot of demons. Flashing eyes, roaring voices, laughing, screeching. Made him sick as a dog, he said. Stop thinking that stuff. It's rubbish. What's your name? Margaret. Some calls me Daisy. There you are then, Daisy. There's our village. There. See? The flashing eyes. Demons. Devils. But their headlights are cars on the road. Look. There's the pub. There's St. Edmund's. No! Ain't no road. No church. She's so silly that she can't get home because of devils twixt here and there. Torches they got to light the fire. Look, listen, just believe me, those are smoke. That horrible smell. Well, it, it's smoke. Somebody's. Little Bonfad. They're burning them. They're on fire. Screaming. Dying. They're devils. Devils. Evil. You burned them alive. Screaming. Don't do that. Let me go. You don't want me, do you? You ain't human. You're a ghostie. One of them. You was all the time. That is 
What? Ice cream. Cold to the tongue, but pleasant. You are so kind, dear relation. Have we time to do something for you? I have enough for my needs. You dress very strictly. I haven't bought a new thing since father died. He always used to say, don't dress to attract undesirables. Stick to navy or dark brown. What about a new hat? I have sometimes thought about a new hat. A straw one, trimmed with bright ribbon. And, and flowers? Yes, yes. How did you get? I could tell. We were just about to come looking for you. Where's Grandad? In bed. Do you know the time? What happened? I'm not sure. Don't rush her. I saw that that girl, um, or oh, the one who came looking for Miss Ems. She frightened me. We did. She did. Go to the laundrette tonight. I've, oh, I've forgotten about the washing. Oh, we'll go tomorrow, won't we, Dave? Sure. How did she scare you, Mum? What she said. What she did. Oh, what I saw with my own eyes. Did you ask her her name this time? Margaret, she said, or um, Daisy, or. Or the other way around, I don't, I don't know. Was she wearing a brown cape and a brown hat? I didn't see her at first. Oh, it was lovely. It was just getting dark. Then, footsteps behind me, getting nearer and nearer. <laughs> Mine went when the bathroom was put in. We'll try it. Morning. Look who it is. And who's with her? Our old Sunday school teacher. Miss Possett. They must be relations. Are you sure it won't do any damage? Of course not. That reminds me, have you bought the tape? Hmm. And a lovely caterpillar to top it off. Hmm. Well, nothing will happen unless you put money. Someone let some in, good. <laughs> Ruin that machine, that will. Or put my wife's in next. Not after that rubbish. She knows what she's doing. I've seen a lady like her in a far country. They make good things. Just don't upset her. I'm not upsetting her. I just don't think it's fair to the other customers. Many snake in the cauldron boil and bake. I of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Huh? Macbeth, the three witches, the one I played at school. Any words will do it. Saying them with skill is what matters. Pumping up. Must let it boil. <laughs> It's lovely. A gift for a lovely niece from her great great aunt to wear on Midsummer Eve when all are in their best. Thank you, Edie. <gasps> I'd like to introduce my dear long lost relation. It's like that man on the telly. What's his name, ma'am? Does all those tricks. Just. 
kindness for kindness, loving for loving. You're not really a, a witch. I don't object to that way of calling. There are better words. Indeed. I'd like to walk down the street in it. Your witch is my command. And suddenly she was pushing me away. And she spat in my face and ran off. I don't ever want to talk about it again. That's it, Nan. So while the girl was clutching her, your mum must have seen the village, as it was all those years ago. And it was just a few cottages. We've got to find that poor girl. She could have been out in the open all night. Don't say Canon Alloway wrote about Vass as well. Not in the laundrette, not in 1700 and something, could he? But, yes, one Harold Grace recounted that his grandfather told of women suspected of witchcraft being bound up and dragged where a fire had been built to burn them alive. Oh, don't, Colin. He must know. Then he awoke in the night to see demons coming away from the dying fire in strange carts, having two shining eyes in front and red eyes in their backsides, their breath smelling putrid, evil fumes belching forth. Then he saw a girl running in the opposite direction, as if to save her life. One Margaret Ems, he said it was. Then all was still as if nothing had happened. That same poor girl. But could it be after all these years? Well, I think it's her. So do I. Essie's right. We've got to find her. Yes. How? Where do we start? Well, let's see if the diary tells us anything else. And that's the end. Halfway through the last diary. And in the middle of a sentence. No, that's a lot. Tomorrow being Midsummer's Eve, the village festive. He didn't even finish his last word. The writing got a bit shaky. He must have been old. He died writing these words. Poor Canon Alloway. So there's no more about wearing green? All the guardians? All the grinny gog? No, that's a lot. Just empty pages. This morning I heard somebody complaining that the drapers ran out of green ribbon. Maybe more people in the village know about this than we think. There's lots of rehearsals going on for the festival, and the village seems brighter somehow. Wait a minute. And tomorrow being Midsummer's Eve, the day of the festival. Who in the village knows we used to have the festival on Midsummer's Eve all those years ago? Nobody knows who's organising it. It just seems to be happening. Maybe we'll find that out at the festival tomorrow. And maybe we'll find poor Margaret there. If only your mother would tell you where she got the Grinagog. That's where it all started. I've just been down to the post and saw Mr. Alabaster back from Africa. He shouted to me across the street, I hope you're coming to the festival tomorrow, as if he was a villager and I was the visitor. <laughs> I couldn't help smiling. Mr. Alabaster, in time for Midsummer's Eve.